Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, welcome to this video. In this one, we're gonna do three cool text effects in Affinity Photo. So we're gonna do this, which is a slice. Uh, we're also gonna do a paper rip effect kind of thing. And then finally, we're gonna do this uh, melt kind of cool thing. So uh, let's go. Okay, so we're in Affinity Photo. Let's get working on this slice text. Now, uh, if you wanna follow along, the photos are in the description. I like to always reset my studio back to default and uh, just to the default view in case you, in case your screen doesn't look like mine, I wanna make sure uh, they look similar. So to do that, you can just go up to window, studio, and reset studio, just reset everything back to default. And the canvas I'm working with here is FHD. So if you went up to file, new, it's just FHD 1080p, so 1920 by 1080, and I have it in landscape mode. Okay, so uh, let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to do the text first because that's the important part. And then we're gonna spice it up a little bit. So uh, let me put a new fill layer in the background here so we can see it. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, layer, new fill layer. And just for now, I'm gonna go to my color tab and I'm just gonna change it to like a gray or something like that. We're gonna change this, so don't worry. Uh, now that we have a background here selected, um, we are going to add some text by going over to the text tool and your tools menu on the left here. I'm gonna click on that, the artistic text tool. And I'm just gonna click drag out to type. And the font that I'm using is impact because everyone seems to have that installed. It's a default and it's a good solid font that uh, is bold, which is kind of what we're looking for. So I'm gonna center that. So now we have uh, the text created. So now let's create the slice through it. So here's how you do it. Um, we're gonna go to our pen tool over here in our tools menu right here. You can hit P on your keyboard. I'm gonna click on that. And then where we want the slice to start, I'm just gonna start on this part of the S. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna go across the text to about maybe, maybe we'll do it here. I'm gonna click down here. I'm gonna go all the way back and just attach that line. So now I have this line through here. It's this little box that's been attached and I'm, I'm just gonna give it a color. I'm gonna change it to white so we can see it. So now you can see there's a slice through it, but it hasn't actually created a slice in the text. It doesn't look realistic. You can see the line. So here's how you do it. We're gonna to go to our curve, which we just created here. I can turn it on and off so you can see it. We just created that line. We're gonna go up to our blend modes here and we're gonna go down to the bottom and change it to erase. Now that'll, make sure that it's sort of transparent and it'll fit right in. So here's the next part you gotta do. You gotta take the curve, the line you just made, and click and drag it on top of your text and let it go. So now that you can see that has been uh, put right through and now it actually looks like a slice. So had I not done that, I just wanna show you quickly, if I pull it out of here and I change the background color, that slice will always be showing there. You won't, you'll never really see it until you uh, change the setting. So again, I have the blend mode of the curve set to erase and I'm dragging it and clipping it inside the text. So now if I go and change the background color, it's not gonna matter. That slice is, uh, it's in there. Okay, cool. So that's how you do the actual slice effect. Now let's change the background and just make this a little bit more interesting. We're gonna add a shadow. Now I do have also um, this orange, I'm gonna pull these to the top for just a quick example. I have uh, some oranges and I have some water drops uh, which I'll just show you here really quickly. Oops, don't want that. Uh, so we have these water drops here. You can just kind of see them around here, which I'm gonna use, which is just a PNG file. And I have these oranges, which we're gonna use to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so let's change the background first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to, to the bottom of my fill layer here. I'm gonna change it to like a, like a cool blue, like something bright, because um, we're dealing with fruit. So let's do something, something maybe like this. And I'm gonna add a gradient to this to give it like another color. So to do that, we got our fill selected. I'm gonna go over to the gradient tool here in my uh, tools menu. I'm gonna click on that. And from the middle, I'm just gonna click and drag down. Now your gradients, there's different types. If you look in the top left corner, it says type linear. I'm gonna change that to radial. So it comes sort of from the center and then you can just play with this to make it bigger or smaller. I'm gonna pull it out because I want it mostly blue. And if you look up here right next to radial, this is uh, where you can change the colors of your gradient. So I click on this, I'm gonna get some uh, different options here. So the one on the uh, left is the blue and the one on the right, the color right now is black. And if I move this, you'll see it changes back and forth. Uh, one is stronger if I go to the black, if I go towards the black, the blue gets stronger. If I go from black to blue, that gets stronger. So to change the color of this black, cause I don't want it black, I'm gonna click on this black dot on the right hand side here, click on that. I'm gonna go down to color here, click on that. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to like a purple, like something, yeah, like a purple, just to make it like a bit more uh, exciting. And I'll give it a bit more pink, not too much, but just a little bit, maybe pinky purple, maybe like that. So we'll do something like that just to give it a bit of color. Now, here's another step we're going to do. I'm going to add a shadow on top of this, or sorry, below this text, because I really want this this cut to look like it's real, as if they're slightly separated. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our layers panel and we're going to add a pixel layer. So I'm going to add my pixel layer here, click on that. And right now it's at the very top, but I want it below the text because I want it to be a shadow underneath. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm just showing you a quick, pretty efficient way to do it. I'm going to click on my new uh, pixel layer, drag it down below the text in my layers panel. Okay, so I got my pixel layer selected here and I'm now I'm gonna grab my paintbrush. So you can go over here in your tools and click on uh, click on it or just hit B on your keyboard. And the brush I'm using is just a soft round brush. Any soft brush will do. And I'm gonna set it to, uh, let's say, uh, I'm gonna set it to like a black, black shadow type color uh, here. Go back to my pixel layer here. And now, you can see if I, I'm just gonna do this quickly. If I do it, it's just showing underneath. It's not showing on top of the text if I paint, it's underneath it because it's below it in the layers panel. So uh, what we're gonna do is just do this very gently. And right now my opacity, by the way, is set to, I'll pick like 50% because uh, I don't want it too strong. If it was 100%, I'll just show you here. If this was 100%, it would look too strong. That's at 100, I don't want that. So I'm gonna bring the opacity down to like actually maybe 40%. And then I'm just carefully going to paint this. You could also duplicate the text, put a blur. There's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm gonna to go to the top portion here and I'm just gonna start and paint like a little shadow underneath it here. Just so it looks slightly like they're separated. Pull that back a bit. And we'll just do our best to make it look like a real shadow. It wouldn't start before or after. And then we'll do one here. And it's just something small, but it adds a lot. Uh, let me just pull that out. So now, because there's a little shadow, I'll turn it on and off here. Let me zoom in. It just gives it a bit of an effect more that it is now actually separated and maybe a bit above uh, the text below it. So that's a little uh, effect there. Okay, so now that's the main uh, effect. I'm gonna go ahead and just add the oranges and the water drops uh, to make it a little bit more exciting, more of an interesting graphic. Um, what we'll do too is we're gonna add a gradient uh, to this as well. I'm gonna click on my text and now I'm gonna make a gradient in my text. So I'm gonna click on the gradient tool and this time I'm gonna make it, uh, make sure it's set to linear and I'm gonna go down with it this way. And I want my gradient colors to be white and the one on the right here, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go over to my orange, select that, and just make it a little bit orange to be kind of cool. Maybe like something like that, we'll see. Um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna grab some of these oranges. I'm gonna use my selection brush tool to grab some of these oranges, and I'm gonna add some of the uh, water stuff. <laughs> Uh, condensation to make it look a little bit cooler. And I'll speed this part up, but if you don't know about Selection Brush Tool, I also have a video on that, which I can link, but I'll speed this part up. This was sliced through text. So next we're gonna do the rip effect, but let me speed this one up and we'll finish this one. Okay, so this one we're doing the rip effect. Now on this one, I'm using two pictures. Link is in the description if you wanna follow along. There is this concrete texture I have, and there's this newspaper texture I have. And uh, my workspace is the same FHD size-wise. First thing we're gonna do is grab a background. So to do that, you're gonna go up to layer, new fill layer. I'm gonna drag that fill layer to the bottom, and I'm just gonna make it like a gray, so you can kinda of see. We'll change this after, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit off-white, grayish. Now that we have that, I'm gonna to go to my text tool here in my tools menu. I'm gonna to grab that. 
I'm gonna click and drag out and I'm gonna type the word rip, R-I-P. Make it a little bit bigger and kind of center it. There we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did last time first. We're gonna make a cut through it to, uh, to start. So to do that, let's grab our pen tool from our tools menu. You can also hit P on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna click anywhere here and click over here to drag through the text. Make a little box here. Now you can drag it straight across or you can make it like kind of jagged, however you wanna do it. No wrong answer. And I'm gonna close that box up and then I'm gonna make it a color in my color wheel up here. I'm gonna make it just white. Now, now that we have that, remember like our last example, you have to set the blend mode from normal down all the way to the bottom to erase. It doesn't look like much has happened after you do that, but now you have to take that curve, that line. So it's highlighted here in my layers panel. I'm gonna click, highlight it, drag it over top of my text so this whole box lights up and let it go. So now it's actually in there and it looks like there's actually a cut through it. So it looks cool. We're gonna make it look a little bit cooler. I'm gonna grab this newspaper picture that I made and I'm gonna clip it inside this text. So I'm gonna clip, uh, gra grab my newspaper texture from the layers panel. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag it inside uh, of this text here so it appears inside. So now it looks like it's actually inside the text. Now just make sure when you drag it in that it's below this curve. So if I drag it above here and let it go, that curve is gonna be hiding because it's sitting underneath. So make sure the newspaper is sitting underneath it. That way you still get that line. I'm gonna change the background here so you can see it a little bit better. You will make it like that. Okay, so we got this line through it. Now let's make it look actually more ripped so it looks a bit cooler. So with my text selected, make sure you select your text in the layers panel. I'm gonna go up to layer, new live filter layer. Now there's two ways to do this. We're doing it this way because it's the non-destructive way. If, we, if you do it the way I'm doing it here, if you make a mistake, you can delete it, you can change it, no problem. There's a destructive way, which you can't go back on. So do it this way. New live filter layer, then we're gonna go to distort, then we're gonna go to liquefy. When I click on that, my workspace is gonna change. And in the top right corner, there's a little box that says show mesh. So yours might look like this by default, all these like little squares. I just turned it off by clicking show mesh because sometimes it gets in the way. Now, what you're looking for is the turbulence tool on the left-hand side here, it's right here, the liquify turbulence tool. So I'm gonna click on that and my uh, mouse is gonna change to this circle with a target. Now, if I want my brush bigger or smaller, I can always use my bracket key. So if I use my left bracket key, it gets smaller. If I use my right bracket key, it gets bigger. So anyways, now that we've got this selected, I'm just gonna start clicking on this and just messing with it. Maybe I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm literally just clicking and holding and dragging my mouse back and forth to mess with the pixels here and make it look like it's a bit more jagged, like an actual rip. I'll do it on the top and the bottom so it actually looks like a paper rip. And you wanna do it a certain amount. You don't go too crazy because it won't look too real. But I'll just mess with this, drag it up, make it look a little bit more rough. And I think that's looking a little bit more like a rip, a little bit more realistic. You can move your mouse back and forth to kind of drag it up and drag it down. But that looks more like a paper rip to me. I like it. A little bit maybe here, a little bit more up here maybe. And I'm done with that. I'm gonna hit done in the top left corner. So now I have this rip texture that looks pretty cool. And again, if I wanted to, uh, I could change this back to white and I could do the same thing I did in the previous version. If I wanted to add a shadow to it to make it look like it's actually really separated, I'm gonna grab a pixel layer right here. I'm gonna make sure it's uh, underneath my text, which it is. Maybe I'll pull it to like here. I'm gonna grab my brush by hitting B on my keyboard. I already have it selected from the last thing I did, but I'll zoom in here and then I'm just gonna go underneath the text and I'm just gonna draw. Oops, that's not right. That's too much of a, a rip there. I don't want that. Back to my brush. And I'm just gonna drag it here. And I'll be careful here because I don't want that to show too much. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller there. And we'll add a little bit of shadow here and a bit of shadow here. And again, there's multiple ways to do this. You could like duplicate the text and uh, make it blurry and do it that way. But I'm just doing it this way because it's quick and kind of gives the same effect. So it's nothing major, but it just adds a little bit of something. I'll turn it off and on just to look like they're actually separated. And then just finally what I'll do is I'm gonna turn on this uh, concrete texture behind it. I'm gonna add uh, another color. Uh, I'm gonna make this fill color underneath. Watch, I'm gonna drag this above. Everything is gonna go white. I'm gonna make it like 
some kind of cool orange. I'm gonna change the blend mode to something else. Maybe, yeah, maybe, let's see, darken's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe multiply, maybe I'll use multiply just to give it something else so you got this kind of cool effect here. So that is the rip effect. Okay, and one last one we're gonna do is this melt effect. We'll do this one really quickly. Thank you for sticking around if you're still with me. Uh, so the only thing I have in this one is just this uh, oops, this little ice cream cone, which I've isolated. So I'll, I'll link that below too. I already cut it out using the selection brush tool, but we got this ice cream cone. And I'm gonna make a color first. Uh, I'm gonna go to layer, new fill layer, and I'm just gonna make it like pink, maybe pink something, where's pink? Maybe something like this, something nice and bright. Cool, drag it to the bottom. And uh, we're gonna grab our text tool here. I'm gonna click on my text tool and I'm gonna drag it out and say, melt. Oh God, it's giant. Let's make it smaller and pull this over here. And we're gonna use again, impact, cause it's just what I do. Make it a little bit bigger, maybe like this, sure. We're gonna make the text white. And okay, so uh, pretty simple with this one, with our text selected here. Make sure your text is selected. We're gonna go back up to layer, new live filter layer, distort. We're going back to liquify. And this time we're just gonna use the default setting here, which is this push forward tool. And I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna click and I'm just gonna drag and pull this down. Make it a little bit smaller actually. And I'm just gonna like kind of let go, pull, let go, pull, let go. So it looks kind of like it's drooping because if you pull it right down, it won't look quite right. So I'm just gonna pull, drag. You can probably hear my mouse. Just pull this all down. And the more you pull, the more it's gonna follow you down. So make it look like it's melting a little bit more. Doesn't So it doesn't look so rounded in certain parts. Drag this. And you could like pull this part down too, I guess, if you wanted. Make it look like it's melting. So simple effect, I had the mesh on here. That's what it looks like off. So I won't go too extreme with this, but I'll pull it down a little bit more. There we go. And I'm gonna hit done there in the top left corner. So now we have this kind of cool melt effect. You can be obviously a lot more extreme uh, with it. And uh, we could add a shadow to it. You could add whatever you want. I'm gonna add this little ice cream cone here. Maybe I'll move this over here. And maybe I'll grab the ice cream cone and maybe I'll move it over here. I don't know, not really sure. But uh, that's just a quick melt effect. Um, so use the liquify persona, play around with some different stuff, but make sure when you do it, you go up to layer, new live filter layer, uh, distort and do it through there because just to show you, if I didn't like this effect, this liquify effect, I can just turn it off, turn it off and it's gone. So you can change it. I can click on it again. It'll bring me back and I can start editing again. So non-destructive is the way to go. So thanks so much for watching and sticking around. If you found this video helpful, you know what to do. Tap, tap, tap that like button. And if you've never seen my stuff before, why don't you subscribe? All the coolest kids are doing it. Uh, there's rumors that it's maybe one of the greatest videos uh, and, and channels on YouTube. I think I heard someone say that. Uh, could have been me, but it may have not been. I don't know. Uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.